up here on the Braves Sports Network, 91.7 WPRL and WPRL.org, as well as Facebook Live, WPRL. There's the Landon Bussey program and the Nate Kilbert program here in studio. Normally, we're at the Davey Whitney Arena, but as we speak at the 6 o'clock hour, Mississippi Valley's practicing at the arena as we speak. So that's why we're here. We always got to have a plan B. got to have an option B. You know, you, your, your point guard picks up a couple of fouls early, and that's what we had the other night. And Landon Bussey had to make changes and make adjustments, and we had to make changes and adjustments as well. You can join us on the program. You can text a question, 601-301-2611. And I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio. Let's get right to it, folks. Braves head coach Landon Bussey here to my left. Coach Bussey, how you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Doing well. Another successful road trip, another successful road swing. We're the hottest thing going in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Three years in a row, we swept the Texas schools. When was the last time that has happened? We'll talk about that here as we roll along. But a couple of tough games. Prairie View basically ran out of time. We eliminated them on Saturday and then a big win uh, against Texas Southern. Had a double-digit lead, led by 13. Crowd got into it. Texas Southern got going, and then we trailed, and we shut it down. And we won against Texas Southern. Well, what a tough road trip it, it was, but your team stood tall again. Yeah, I mean, two big road wins, so you got to take it um, and enjoy it. Um, now we're going to continue to build and get ready for um, Valley and go from there. So when you, when, when you talk about that, Coach, t- talk a little bit about just how tough it is on the road. You know, winning the Texas swing, we've had the Alabama swing, Florida A&M, but though Cookman, you got Valley UAPB. Of those road trips, which is the toughest, you think? Do you, do you have to put it in, you have to think about it. They're all tough anytime you play away from home, but which is the, the, the toughest way? I mean, all of them is tough, um, but I think a lot of it has to do with which teams is hot, which team is playing well, which teams have having a good season. Um, so right now, I mean, good thing, you know, well, not good thing, well, if we went down to Louisiana, that would have been a tough swing as well, too. Yeah. But however, we dropped both of them games at home, which cost us to put us in the situation where we are now. But, you know, right now, I would say, you know, that, that, um, I don't know, probably that, probably the, probably the, probably the Texas. Yeah, Texas swing is tough. I thought maybe with Florida and Emma Bethune Cookman, I mean, I guess with Houston, you know, it just depends on how, how you want to play the logistics game. You want to stay in the same hotel for three days or do you split it up and stay in two hotels to kind of be closer to Prairie View, closer to Texas Southern? I guess the bottom line is the road's never easy, and you're playing two teams at this point in time, one desperate to make the tournament, one trying to stay in the top two or three. So this one was really tough considering what was at stake. Yeah, um, we split ours up, staying in Waller for one night after the game headed to Houston. So just try to find a way to make sure we're accessible to do shoot around and practice. The Land and Bussy program, glad you can join us. Let's look at the road trip coach, Prairie View A&M. Uh, just talk about that team. We And we talked about it uh, the other day. Normally when you talk about Coach Smith's team, usually near the top of the standings, top three, top four, they're right there. But it's, it's been a struggle for them. What was the challenge as you took on a Prairie View team that was playing for their lives in terms of trying to make the top eight? They know they just didn't have nothing to lose. They had nothing to lose, so they came out there. They played free. They came out there. They was aggressive. They played hard. Um, you know, they they was they did a great job of scouting our plays, and they did a great job of taking out what we wanted to do. Um, I, I felt as though they ran out of gas. Um, I think our depth, you know, played a big factor into it, and I think we were just tough enough to go on the road and survive. Uh, we're looking at some of the highlights for those watching. Just getting off to a fast start, you've talked about that, and m- the vast majority of games, Coach, we have done that. What's the key to getting off to fast starts, especially on the road? Getting a good night of sleep, coming in and, you know, having a good shoot around. After shoot around, going to go lay down and get off your feet and get your mind prepared for the game. And then for the warm-up, having a great – getting a good sweat for the warm-up. And understanding the game plan, that's what it's all about, is preparation. So, right now, I think that we're, you know, average as far as having fast starts. We didn't have a fast start against Jackson State, I don't believe. We we, we might have did. I know we didn't have a fast start against Prairie View. Uh, we came out flat last time we played Valley. So, you know, we got to find a way to be consistent. You got to find a way to be consistent for 40 minutes. You know, one of the things that, that you've done, 
Um, you know, normally the head coach is kind of in the locker room 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes before the game. You've made it, uh, I wouldn't say it's a habit, but from time to time you're out there watching them warm up 25 minutes before the game. That's something that you don't see, but what do you gauge off of that? What, what signs are giving you when you do that? To see who's not ready to play and who's ready to play. To see who need to, you know, who, who I need to have a very short leash with. You know, just because, you know, their practice and their warm-up habits isn't, you know, to my expectations. So it's really just a gauge to see, you know, how do I want to go prepare for this rotation? Um, you know, if you not aren't having a good warm-up and you don't have a sweat and you're not going hard, then your leash is going to be very short. So when you get on that court, you better do something. But if you're having a good warm-up, I'll give you a longer leash. So there have been times in which walking into the arena you have a set lineup in terms of what you want to who you want to start your five but then based on the warm-up 25 minutes before the game you can actually you've actually absolutely. had to make those changes absolutely absolutely i mean you know this team you, you don't know who you're going to start until you know the jump ball just due to um you got to make sure these guys understand the the importance of focus important and attention to details where we are right now right now we're in march um, you should be playing your best basketball in March. However, um, you know, we're playing, you know, solid basketball. It's not our best, but we're playing solid basketball. So you look at the lineup. So you're clearly Jalen Hawkins, Jeremiah Kendall, Byron Joshua, Jeremiah Gambrel, and uh, Peugeot. So you've been pretty satisfied with that lineup, starting Michael Peugeot and, of course, Jalen Hawkins with, with the other three, Joshua, Gambrel, and Kendall. Just talk about that and how solid you've been and how pleased you've been with that starting lineup. Because we know in years past, the lineups have changed from game to game. No, I'm not happy with, you know, how them guys start sometimes. And sometimes you got to get them motivated to start a little faster. Um, so I'm not really happy with it. Um, but my assistant coaches convinced me not to change it up because we have a winning streak and we have some type of rhythm and momentum going. So that's the only reason why. But, you know, I, I think that we don't do a good job of starting. I think sometimes we just come out relaxed. And I think it's an expectation that a team's going to like Prairie. Like they're going to lay down for you. Like let's go ahead and put our foot on their necks. Like how we started against Texas Southern. And it's not that we started off 9-0. We just had a different pop to us. We had, we had an edge to us. Like we understood that that game meant something. Every game means something. No, no matter if you're playing Prairie View, no matter if you're playing Texas Southern, Valley, Palm Bluff. You know, every game at this point is is key. Yeah. And when it gets Prairie View here, as we're looking at the highlights, we started 8 nothing um, in that Prairie View game. And it was a three-point game at the break. So talk about the ebb and flow of that first 20 minutes. Um, You know, we just we just came out flat. You know, we, we made our run. I think they got up to probably about 11 points in that first half. We made a run to cut it. Um, J.K. scored about four to six points in a row. Um, Jeremiah made a few shots. And we was able to, you know, we was able to make a little run. But it was a time where you had Byron, J.K., and Mike on the bench just due to I didn't think that they was bringing the, the intensity that they should be bringing. And when you go with Jolly and you go with Willie and you go with Tank, you know, you still have guys who can um, get you to where you need to be and bring you back in the game. You know, vice versa. I think the tank closed out the last ten minutes of the game, and J.K. didn't because J.K. was in foul trouble, and we had a group that was on that court that was that was making a run. So you know, we stuck with it. So you know, just with us having depth and numbers and things like that, I tell the guys all the time, you know, just stay ready to play. If you're on the bench, uh, worry about why I'm not in the game, when I'm gonna get in. When you get in, you're you're not gonna be ready. You're not gonna be focused. But if you're on that bench and you're you are encouraging your teammates. If you're on the bench and you're seeing some of the things that this person that plays your position is or isn't doing, um, you'll be ready to play. Yeah, we trailed by as many as 13. It was a three-point game. And then, Coach, I thought we came out in that second half with, with a pretty good pop to start. Yeah, we we came – well, we came out a little flat in the second half, but then we, we ended up making our run. I think we made our run, I think it was anywhere between a 10-minute mark or probably, probably around an 8-minute mark to probably about the – Three minute mark. That five minute span. That was our best defensive um, span that we had that whole game. Now and then, Jeremiah got hot, and then DK got hot. So when you got two guys shooting the ball well, and now your defense starting to pick up, and I think that lineup it was Byron, Mike, DK, Tank, and Jeremiah. Um, 
they really locked down defensively. Yeah, that's and the defense was terrific. It was 61 to 53, coach, with 640 left. And we ended the game, coach, on a run like 20 to 6 in that, in that last 640. Where did it start to turn around in that, that six? Where does it start when Jackson State, Prairie View, and some of the games in which we got to have it, we got to have a stop, we got to have a bucket? Where does it start? Does it, and I guess it's a crazy question. It starts on the defensive end, or does it start with a three? And then it just kind of takes over the defense on the second part of it. Well, I think right there when it was 61 to 53, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jeremiah hit a three right after that. Um, and then um, we was able to get another stop, and I think Jeremiah hit another three. Right. And so now we starting to see, like, and I think the day's starting to get a little tense. Previous players starting to get a little tense. Like, okay, now here comes Alcorn. Here they come. Um, and then it was a look that Byron and DK – now they said, okay, now we're ready to play after 34 minutes. You know, you guys have come ready to play now. But good thing we was able to keep the the range in close enough distance to where as though we can make our run. Yeah, the Braves were able to do just that in the last six and a half minutes. The Braves got it done. So offensively, Coach Jeremiah Gambrell and Jeremiah Kendall coming back to Prairie View. They're both PVU transfers. Just talk about the games that they had and just the emotional aspect. You you know how it is, and you even admitted coming back to Prairie View, you, you were nervous, you were jitters. Uh, just how you deal with that, with those individuals coming back, coming back to Prairie View, in this case, with a lot at stake. Well, you know, I just told them guys just to come out and be relaxed, focus on defending on the defensive end and rebounding. Um, and I think when you do that, you know, your game will come to you. You know, try to get some easy points, get a layup, get to the free throw line, um, get a steal, um, get on transition and run. You have to see that ball go through the basket. Um, I think that Jeremiah did a great job of just being poised and patient and not taking any bad shots. And then late in, the, and then late in that half, um, in the second half, we just gave him the ball. Um, he already had hot. He, like I said, he was in the backyard back at home. And he felt good. He felt comfortable. He had his family there. He had his daughter there. He was ready to roll. Yeah. I mean, he took over. And then Thorn got going. I mean, we had, I think, three threes in a row there. Uh, we always talk about the green light with guys like Thorn and, and Jeremiah Gamble. Do they have that kind of freedom in, in the offense and the flow of things? Because very rarely have I seen you grimace when those threes are taking bad shots. I haven't seen that much at least the body language from you, do they kind of have that kind of flow and freedom offensively? Who? <laughs> Jeremiah Kendall, yeah. A.K. Thorne. You said Jeremiah Kendall or yeah. Gambrill? Yeah, I'm Gambrill. I'm sorry, Gambrill. Oh, okay. Yeah, Gambrill. I'm sorry, Jeremiah yeah. Gambrill, yeah. Yeah, Jeremiah Gambrill can shoot the ball as, as much as he want. Um, you know, I want him to shoot the ball a little more. I mean, he has a great his, – his, because, you know, you know, his investment that he put in in the gym is, is unmatched. You know, he spends a lot of time in the gym mastering his craft. And it shows, you know, for him to shoot 42 to 43% from the from the three-point line. It shows. So, yes, he has a green light, and DK does too. Um, but, you know, I like DK to get to that mid-range first and see the ball going in the basket. And DK go get his, you know, transition point. And he'll get to the free throw line. And that's when DK um, able to expand um, his three-pointer once he sees that ball going to the basket. Braves with a big come from behind win, coach. Of you look at the scoring in the game, Jeremiah Gambrell with 21 points, uh, DK Thorne with 12, Joshua with 11, followed by Jalen Hawkins with eight points, um, and Jeremiah Kendall, coach. We talked about him, one of the top scorers in this conference, uh, eight points and five rebounds. Uh, were they defending him? Just kind of a tough shooting night for him. No, I mean, J.K. points and rebounds depend on J.K. It has nothing to do with no other team strategy. Um, it's all about what mindset J.K. comes out with. Um, he could be very dominant. Um, but I think that, you know, against the Prairie game, he was relaxed. Um, he came out too patient and calm and just nonchalant. And, you know, it kind of put us in a bind because when, you know, J.K. and Jeremiah, they help each other out so much they don't even know it, you know. It's hard to double. It's hard to double J.K. because you got Jeremiah. Yeah. Um, and then when you do double J.K., you got you know Jeremiah get wild with my shots, and so they help each other out. So you know when you got Jeremiah rolling, um, is you know J.K. should it should be easy for him. But I think they just came out a little flat, um, and I think that um, it kind of affected him. Um, 
with his foul trouble as that well too. He picked up some early fouls. So, but then, you know, he was able to turn around quick and have a great game against Texas Southern. Yeah, he picked up his fourth foul, I think, with 13 minutes left. So you had to, you had to, uh, you had to coach it up a little bit when that happens. You want to keep him on the floor. Picked up his fourth personal. I think it was a six-point game when he did. Talk about how the team was able to rally around that. You know, using um, obviously Bayard and and Benet just trying to defend the post. Yeah, I mean. Tank was huge. You know, Tank came up and made some big plays, some big box outs, and just, you know, went with him the rest of the game. Um, you know, I'm all about who, who, what group is giving us the best chance of winning. You know, it could be whoever's not playing well at the time. You know, we got to make changes. We got to make the change. You know, but we got to go with group is, is playing, the way, playing the best at that time. And Tank was huge for us. Um, Mike came in the game, was huge for us. Uh, Byron was huge for us in the, in the second half. You know, I think that he was doing a good job of getting downhill, finding his teammates. So we just got to go with be- what group is best. I mean, do you realize, Coach, during this streak, you can start with Bethune-Cookman, Jackson State, Prairie View, Texas Southern, how when you had to have it, in every game there's a defining moment one way or the other, whether you win or lose the game, in, in, in a moment in time, we have come up with whatever we needed to come up with to settle a game down and to find a way to pull games out. Jackson State, we talked about Bethune-Cookman. Um, we have found ways, Coach, to when it when, when you had to have it, you've been able to get it. Yeah, but we also found ways to make the game harder than what it has to be. You know, and, you know, one game I was really proud of my team about was the Bethune-Cookman game. I think we was very dominant um, throughout the duration of the game. Same thing uh, at Pine Bluff. At Pine Bluff. Now, Texas Southern was pretty much the same thing, you know. And I looked at the time. It was 6.44 in the second half. And we just completely just got distracted by the crowd. And we got the crowd back in it, and the crowd got their their, their team back in it. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about Texas Southern. The Braves got the big win over Prairie View to keep the string going. And now you get ready for Texas Southern. You and I have talked about this, and you have brought it up, the fact that you're recruiting – how to get better in the post, how to get bigger in the post, how to get tougher in the post, are for games and moments like Texas Southern. And so you talked about the first meeting. We saw what happened there at home. Uh, What were the biggest adjustments as you had the 48 hours to get ready for Johnny Jones' team for a game winning streak? Um, What were some of the things we had to get better at the second go-round? Rebounding, boxing out, and Lemonton. P.J. Henry touches. Um, but now Cissé got rolled. I think he had, what, 36 points against or something like that. Um, and I think we did a good job of rebounding down and boxing out. We got a lot of work to do. Um, we got a lot of work to do um, because we know once it gets to the tournament, we'll see Texas Southern in the tournament at some point. Um, we know what they want to do as far as get, creating second-chance opportunities. So, But I do – think that we did a great job of just limiting them to one shot. I think that we out-rebounded them by 11 or 12. And that's the way it should be. And that's the way it should be for the re- remainder of the season. Yeah, uh, when you talk about P.J. Henry, and then I think he just kind of framed it. Yeah, you don't want P.J. to get 36 what Cissé had. So I guess it's a balance. Pick, pick your poison. I mean, it's either P.J. or someone else. And obviously you wanted someone else other than – P.J. Henry to get it done? No, not no. necessarily. I think that it's not pick your poison. We got to do we got to do a better job of guarding both of them guys. Like when we can do it, we have the personnel to do that. We spend enough time on the defensive end to do that. Um, just like the Bethune game, you know, Zion Harmon and Jacoby Hetty, they just as efficient on the offensive end, and we was able to slow both of them down. So I think that we got to do a great job of. Um, expecting more out of ourselves on the defensive end and do a better job of making sure that we stay locked in on the defensive end as far as understanding the personnel. Are are you still having to, and it sounds like you're still having to sell this defense first mentality after the runs that we've had, the players that are here that have been a part of the special, you know, regular season runs. sounds like you're still having to sell 
defense first. Yeah, I mean, you always going to sell it. I mean, with these with these kids nowadays, you got to continue to reinforce it. Continue to reinforce it. If you want to be good at something, no matter what you want to be good at, you got to work on it every single day. You have to work on it. You got to you got to work on it. You got to continue to drill it in their head. And before you know it, you know, in the swag tournament, you know, th- hopefully it will start to show. But, you know, like we watching film and, and I, you know, like DK and Mike, you know, keep telling them, like, those guys can't be the guys who are having your defensive breakdowns. You know, them guys have been here for three years now. And, but, and then, you know, they try to give you an excuse. Well, that's not our principles. You know, you should have you sh- you should have never been in that position if you just buy as you just go buy by the principles. And so you just got to continue to reinforce it, reinforce it, reinforce it. Um, but like I said, you know, the last three games, it, it saved us in the last five minutes of the game. You know, to the Prairie View, to the to the uh, Texas Southern, when we was up, I think we were down five with two minutes to go, and to Jackson State. It saves us. You know, our defense saves that at times um, to where as though we get on transition and we could just completely just shut teams down for three to four minutes. Because I don't think Texas Southern scored in the last two minutes. And I think Prairie View scored, what, four points in the last seven minutes? And then um, it was about a three, four-minute span against Jackson State where they didn't score. Yeah. In five-minute span, really, when you look at the Jack Jackson State game. All right, so I, I want to get back to Texas Southern coaching. Uh, it was a – I thought we did a terrific job in grabbing a 13-point lead with 6.45 left. Johnny Jones called a timeout. And then all of a sudden, you start – Egging the crowd on, and next thing you know, a 6-0 run. You got to call a quick timeout. And then the run that we had against Prairie View, Texas Southern had that run on us until we until we shut it down. And you talked about it after the game, having the poise in these moments because you really had a chance to put it away and make it a lot easier on ourselves. But instead, it was a lot harder on ourselves even though we found a way. Yeah, it's just the poise, the – expectation of this is what you're supposed to be doing. You know, when you when you celebrate and you do all that showboating and you do all that, you know, all that extra talking to the crowd, you don't expect to you don't expect to do this. This is not something which you normally do. And what I'm trying to teach the guys is like y- y'all supposed to do this. What are you celebrating for? Seven minutes to go. So when you do stuff like that, it just shows that, you know, you you gotta be you gotta be ready for the moment. You got to learn how to handle success. And we put ourselves in a situation to where as though you you talking to the crowd, you showboat, and you celebrate. And, and this is a lot of basketball left to be played. This team just came back from you at your home up 11 points. And the reason why we are where we are right now as far as fighting for, fighting for position to be a second and why we're not at the top of, of the – Conference, conference right now is because of moments like we had the other day. We lost to Texas Southern home, up 11. We lost to Grand, uh, Southern at home, up 10. We lost to Alabama State at Alabama State, up 13. That's three out of your five losses right there that you were up in the second half with double figures and you lost because a lack of focus, a lack of discipline, um, showboat and celebrate and, and just not prepare for the moment. And we almost, it almost happened again at Texas Southern and it's unacceptable. And until these guys got to understand that there's a 40 minute game, then we're going to continue to put ourselves in that situation. And we did put ourselves in that situation, but yet we, we rallied coach. Where did it start? I mean, with the two, three pointers, and then defensively, Coach, you just trying to get stops, and Texas Southern kept coming, and then next thing you know, they had the big run, and they had the five-point lead. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't remember which stop it was, but, um, you know, we just, you know, trying to change my defense up. You know, I'd really, you know, it's hard really for me to change the go zone and, you know, mix different defenses up because, you know, when, when your primary defense isn't working and something that you spend – you know, hours on each day, and you only spend a certain amount of time on this your secondary defense. It's hard to switch it up. It's so hard. But my, you know, Coach Payne convinced me to you know go to a different defense, which was really really hard for me to do. But it it threw them off too because nobody, everybody knows that you know Alcorn is not going to play zone. Everybody know I don't want to play zone. It's just you know I think that you 
I should recruit and we should have tough enough players who can um, can guard the yard, keep your man out the paint, limiting the one shot. So I think with us just throwing his own at him in a crucial moment really threw him off. I tell you what, we got – you know, we, we did a great, a great job, Coach, down the stretch, 74 all. Uh, Jeremiah Kendall with the big bucket. I mean, just and getting the stops in the last the last few minutes. How how tough was that, and how special was that, knowing that you had to get those stops and you, and you did. I mean, hopefully, hopefully it helps us in this swag tournament. Hopefully, these games right now help us in the swag tournament for us to, you know, learn how to win games in the last four or five minutes. Hopefully, we can learn from this and continue to grow from it. So it, it's a blessing to where it's though. You're winning games and you're not playing your best right now. And now you have three games behind you that would came down to the last five minutes and you was able to win all of them. Yeah. So hopefully this helps us. Um next week, you know, next week to start, you know, everything we've been doing for these last month for a few months is is, is preparation for, you know, one week. Well, you gave me a challenge after that Texas Southern game as the Braves won 82 to 79. You said, when was the last time we swept the Texas schools three years in a row? And I had to do a little investigating, a little studying, and a little, a lot of digging. And it has happened. 99-2000, uh, 2000-2001, and 2001-2002 was the last three-year run that we swept the Texas schools. So it has been a while, Coach, since we've done that. Something that, that's very rarely done. Yeah, it's tough to do. It's tough to do with two, you know, well-coached teams and, you know, on the road, tough environment, and you're going against, you know, three-time back, three-time SWAC tournament champions. So, you know, it's tough. It's tough, you know, but we was able to do it. We feel comfortable in Texas. You know, them guys feel comfortable in Texas. They know how to win on the road. You know, we, we play our best basketball on the road. Um, so now – we got a big time game tomorrow. Got to find a way to, you know, come out here and not not be in a dog fight. Well, Mississippi Valley comes in here. They beat this Prairie View team, and so when you look at uh, Mississippi Valley coach, what can we expect here? Because you talked about it. There's some stuff at stake here. Uh, two seeds in play. Um, Southern goes to Alabama State and Alabama A and M, and we got to handle our business here. And hopefully if the Jaguars drop one, we'll have a shot at the two seed. Southern has the tiebreaker because they beat us in that in that only meeting. So what do you expect from Valley coaches? They uh, roll in here, George Ivory's ball club. I expect them to come out and uh, be really aggressive trying to um, finish out their season. Um, Raquan Brown, um, who's playing unbelievable right now, had 30 points, 30-something points the other day. He had 20-something points against us. So we're going to have our hands full guard him. We're going to try to mix different defenses up and throw him off. Yeah, he had 26 in that first meeting. He had 20 at halftime, Coach. Again, we have found ways to make adjustments against the uh, other team's best player, and we'll be dealing with that. And then UAPB, a team that can shoot the cover off of it from beyond the arc, a good three-point shooting team coming in. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna try to space you out, and they'll have four guards who can really shoot the ball. Um, so we just try to be tough and cover the three-point line and try to attack them on offense, and then hopefully we can beat them up on the inside. But they, they have a really good unit. Um, that shoots the ball extremely well. So we're going to have to do a great job of covering. Um, and they're fighting. Um, they need these games to get in this white tournament. So it's, it's not going to be an easy game. It's not going to, you know, Valley has nothing to lose. Pine Bluff has everything to lose. So right now, both teams is going to come out, and I think it's going to be um, play really hard. And, of course, Saturday is the last regular season home game. Talk about senior day, Coach. That's what it will be. Uh, just the seniors playing as a final time at the Whitney Arena. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you got guys who came here and um, trusted in me and my abilities to, you know, help them grow as young men, put them in the best situation, be successful on and off the court. So you take your hats off to them um, as, you know, J.K. plays, you know, one last time on his court, you know, Jeremiah, Jalen Hawkins. Um, they play one last time on the court, and you know, with that being said, is you know we want to we want to send them guys off the right way. How important is a coach? Finally, uh, are you looking at standings? Are you looking at seedings? I mean, we're in. We're going to get uh, one of the top 
three, four seeds? Are you, are you, does it matter? Two, three, four, does it matter as far as seeding? So are you looking at that? Absolutely, it matters. It matters because, you know what I mean? You want to finish as high as possible. Just, you know, want these guys to see some type of reward for their hard work. But it also matters because that one or two seed, you get a game, rest, game. You know, if you're, if you're anywhere between three and six, you got game on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's no rest days, you know. So we would like to get that two seed. You know, and then we can have a game, rest, then you got two games after that. Yeah, that's Wednesday, Friday, Saturday as compared to Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Braves basketball coming up tomorrow. Coach, a short week. You had you left right after the game, and uh, we should be ready to roll on Thursday. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. That's Braves head coach Landon Bussey. We'll take a two-minute break here. Nate Kilbert standing by after this two-minute break here on the Braves Sports Radio Network. <laughs> 